In this presentation, I would like to propose some practical tips on dealing with difficult people. My goal is to propose strategies that are practical, simple, and effective, which means they actually work. So let's define what we mean by difficult. In general, someone who exhibits negative behavior towards most people most of the time can be considered difficult. As far as you and me are concerned, anybody who exhibits negative behavior towards you or myself, we can consider for our purposes to be a difficult person. I would like to talk specifically about four strategies. The first one is to run. The second is to change your attitude. The third strategy is changing their attitude. And finally, the fourth strategy I would like to talk about is taking a stand. Running away from the difficult person is based on the notion that you do not need to let changing others consume you. So we use this strategy when we have nothing to gain from changing our attitude or changing the other person's attitude. This is also a good technique to use when you gain nothing by taking a stand. Here's a story about how to use the run strategy. A friend of mine once was hired by an organization where he found out very soon after getting hired that he made the wrong move. He found out that he is part of a closed communication culture that was strongly nurtured by the CEO. And he found out from a couple of conversations with the CEO and the people around that CEO that changing him was almost out of the question. So he decided to use the run strategy because he knew that the, his attitude was not a problem. He cannot change the CEO's attitude and he would gain nothing from taking a stand. The second strategy I would like to talk about is changing your attitude. Remember that the reason the other person is perceived by you as difficult might be a problem in you, not in the other person. So the first thing you need to do to change your attitude is to check your own perception. Why do you perceive this other person as difficult? The problem might lie within you, not in the other person. Another technique you can use to change your attitude is to see beyond difficult. Ask yourself, why is this person being difficult? There has to be a reason. See beyond the difficulty and try to understand where this person is coming from. For example, this person might be in trouble. This person might be worried or afraid. Try to find out why this person is being difficult by looking beyond difficult. The third technique you can use is to try to understand the other person's point of view. Try to understand why is this person being difficult. Maybe he has a problem with you or with your attitude. Try to understand that and that will help you also deal with a difficult person. I remember at a client's site when once I had to change my attitude towards Ken. I saw Ken as a negative person who was resisting change. That was my attitude towards Ken as a consultant. But I knew that with that kind of attitude I cannot work with Ken. Ken started resisting me and resisting the change that I was bringing to the organization. And I think a big part of that was my attitude towards Ken. Then I decided to look at Ken as a person. And I noticed that he is a family man who cares for his children and grandchildren. And we started having conversations with Ken as a person. Then things have changed and Ken was much more cooperative. And I think the main reason there is that I had the wrong attitude towards Ken. And when I fixed my attitude, then Ken changed. And we had a very healthy relationship that was beneficial for me, for him, and for his organization. The third strategy I would like to talk about is changing their attitude, the difficult person's attitude. You can understand why they are difficult, show them another angle to the problem, and help them see you as a person. A trainer I know was once faced with a difficult situation where he had to change the attitude of one of his participants. At the beginning of the training, the participant said to the trainer, I think this whole training is useless. Now the trainer came back and asked him a question. He asked the participant, if this is a useless training, and it might be. However, there must be a reason you are here. And the participant came back and said, well, I think it is useless, it's not going to help our company, but I came in to see if there is anything and I doubt there is, that I might be able to use in my work. So the trainer came back and said, maybe it is useless, Mr. Participant, as you said, but how about we agree we go through this training? 
and then you decide if you find something useful you use it and if not you do not have to use it and they both got into an agreement and actually the participant gave a raving review for the trainer and the training and was of the main participants and champions of the change that the trainer was trying to implement at that organization the last strategy I will talk about is taking a stand this is used as a last resort we use it when your attitude is not the problem when you cannot change their attitude even though you have tried when it goes beyond attitude to actually hurtful actions from the other person and when running is too costly in reality not subjectively to take a stand first I have to understand my options then I have to develop a strategy on how to deal with the situation then I have to confront and collaborate. This is the good guy approach, but also use the or else for what I call the bad guy approach, using threats if necessary. Finally, take action to remedy the situation and confront and collaborate again if needed. Remember, what you need to do is to persevere and not give up on solving the problem when you take a stand. A good example of taking a stand is reporting harassment in the workplace. Usually by reporting harassment, the harassment stops. When taking a stand, make sure to show discomfort with what the other person is doing. Show your disapproval that you do not accept this kind of behavior. Remember to take it seriously and don't make a joke out of it. Some people joke about how others are hurting them. Don't let them make you feel guilty. When you take it seriously, they might say, we were just joking around. Remember to divide and conquer. Don't solve problems with groups, but with individuals. If you must, remember to poke back with things like, at least I am not, and of course you are Mr. Perfect. What I mean by, at least I am not, when somebody says, for example, what kind of work, look at the kind of work so and so is you are doing. You can poke back by saying, at least I'm honest, at least I don't hurt others at least I know what I'm doing. All of these things are actually poking back at the other person that will make him stop and have to defend himself. Another thing that you can do, as I said, is to go back and say, of course, and you do your work perfectly, and of course, you are never late. Again, you are putting him in a defensive stand. I'm not saying do this all the time, but when you have to, when you are under attack and you have to, you can use these techniques and they actually work. Here's a summary of what we talked about. We discussed four strategies, run, change your attitude, change their attitude, and take a stand. I run when it is not my fight, it's not worth it, and I have dim chances of winning. I change my attitude when I have preconceived notions about the other person, when I have had previous bad experiences with her or him, or when I have negative feelings towards this person. All of these might make me biased towards the person and make me perceive him as negative when he is not. I try to change their attitude when they have the preconceived notions, when they have had a previous bad experience, or when they have negative feelings towards me. Finally, I take a stand when I cannot run, when I have no other viable options, and when I am hurt from the status quo and I cannot allow it to continue.